Lock and tubs. That looks like our recording just started. And of course, we can't kick off a webinar without having some te technical difficulties like the chat feature. It's always inevitable. So um, I just want to do a quick, here, I'll stop sharing here. Quick introduction of Jim Jones. So Jim, I'm excited that you're uh, hopping on this with us and excited to talk about you know, how we got to where we're at. So first off, just Jim Jones, you've been over at Rain Walk and Tubs for what, about seven years now, uh, heading up the specialty bath division, correct? That is correct. And Jason, it's a pleasure. And most importantly, to all the best bath dealers, we're excited now to be part of Best Bath. Um, you know, I'll just give you a little background. Uh, Rain actually had focused on the healthcare side. Uh, that's where we had truly cut our teeth. And ironically, a lot of the things that we learned from the healthcare, we brought over to our now walk-in tubs. So it's exciting to bring that. Um, I have a history within the medical arena for over 20 years now. And um, most of that would have been backed by the safe patient handling movement, which many of the, uh, the best bath dealers, you know, actually are, you know, well augmented in when you look at, uh, could be ramps or it could be uh, ceiling lifts as an example. So it's exciting to be part of the uh, the best bath family for sure. Well, and you and I've been pounding the street together for quite a while. I mean, we've been in the same industry now, like I said, about eight years, if not longer. And uh, the fun part has been we've best bath and rain have always been, you know, friendly competitors. You know, there was a time when a lot of our dealers on this call can remember when we manufactured our own walk-in tubs, um, we only manufactured inward swinging door tubs. So there were a lot of times and opportunities when, you know, our dealers or customers, you know, reached out to us looking for an outward swinging door. And we always just referred them over to rain walk and tubs, even though we were competitors, we we're friendly competitors. And we'd say, just go rain is the place to get your outward swinging door if you need it. And I mean, that's been the story as long as I've worked at Best Bath and, you know, me and Jim would always end up at the same trade shows. And, you know, it's fun to, when we got out of the walk-in tub business and decided to stop manufacturing in-house and, um, you know, we were able to provide our molds over to Rain. And here we are a few years later now acquiring Rain and bringing them under the best bath umbrella. And it was just such a great fit with Rain, you know, being American made product, uh, made over in Sparta, Tennessee, where we're in, you know, Idaho. So, Again, just great uh, local areas in the U.S. and really supports what we do as well, being a family-owned company. So uh, I know we're excited to have Rain be part of the Best Bath umbrella. And, you know, I'm sure most of our dealers have heard about this three months ago. So it took us a little bit to get it released to everybody. So we're excited to kind of dive into the release of the first two Rain walk-in tubs under the Best Bath brand. So um you know, I think this is a great segue for Jim and I to just kind of dive into, oh, Chanel said chat should be active. So I think we're good to go with the chat now. If you guys start popping in questions for Chanel for when we're all done. But I think this is a great segue for Jim and I to just dive into, you know, the two tubs we decided to launch first and why. And I kind of touched on it already, uh, being that we never offered an outward swinging door. So we are offering that inward swinging and outward swinging with the launch. And maybe uh, Jim can jump into that a little bit with why, what the differences are and why we chose those two tubs. Yeah, in fact, uh, just to sort of step in where Jason had left off there, uh, we at Rain always sent shower uh, options back to, yeah. to uh, Best Bath. So it was ironically, like he said, we were friendly competitors and now we're actually part of the same family. Well, most of the folks that's going to be familiar with walk-in tubs, um, no doubt the most popular is the RC2. That's an inward swinging tub. And then uh, the second um, unit that we're providing is the RM3 that's an outward swinging tub. So as we go down through this, we'll talk about some of the features accordingly. I, I'd like to point out, and just so everybody understands, uh, based over the COVID time, the walk-in tub industry has actually flourished. I mean, in, in reality, it's blossomed. We estimate that about three years ago, the market was around 200 million. It now has doubled, in fact, is 
at over a half a billion dollars a year in walk-in tub sales. And the one thing I do like to point out for everybody's benefit, the walk-in tub, that name is truly a generic name. So all the marketing that's done, we all get to benefit from that. And I mean, we're talking millions and millions of dollars about walk-in tubs. And so we use that to your benefit. Don't, don't lose sight of that. Use the walk-in tub um, uh, descriptor, if you will, so that we can benefit from all those millions of dollars uh, that are used out there. Yeah, I think that's a great point. I mean, a lot of these companies that are really charging the way with the walk-in tub, they're truly marketing companies. Um, they just are marketing, marketing, marketing machines, and they're promoting walk-in tubs. And, you know, the they don't promote where they're coming from. They don't promote what brand they are. They're promoting walk-in tubs where we get to have that advantage of not only being a walk-in tub manufacturer, but truly being a manufacturer that does it in the U.S., which is pretty rare in this walk-in tub industry. It is. And in fact, with all the shipping issues, and I don't know that uh, a lot of you are familiar with uh, the container costs, they are starting to come down. But uh, with all the shipping issues, with the majority of the walk-in tubs truly being manufactured across the pond, there really was some stagnation, uh, you know, within trying to get uh, the product in, in general. So we never really had that. In fact, uh, again, the walk-in tub industry, it's uh, truly flourished and uh, we're very fortunate being a U.S. manufacturer and uh, thankful of that for, for sure. So well, Jake, I, know. I don't know, did we want to go into the RC2, the RM3? How do you well, want to go promote that? I would think before we do that, and I know we, I want to make sure we stay true to our time and be wrapped up by, you know, within a half hour so that way we have time for questions. But before we dive into like specifics on the tubs themselves, I've had many arm wrestling conversations about in, an outward swinging door versus an inward swinging door. I've had numerous dinners or sitting around where, you know, some of my dealers truly believe that they only, they'll only sell the outward swinging door. And then I've had those. And even when we were manufacturing, we manufactured only that inward swinging door. Um, I would love to hear your take on the differences between the two. And is there one that's truly better? Um, now that I've learned a lot, you know, I, I don't believe there is, but I would love to get some, uh, open up that discussion a little bit. Yeah, actually, and it's a great point. Um, ladies and gentlemen, it's probably that most commonly everybody thinks of the walk-in tub as the swing-in door. That's what they see on TV. Ironically, and this is where we have to put on our sales hat and determine, is the walk-in tub the swing-in door version the best option for them? And if so, don't try to out and oversell them on an out swinging door. And I think that's where so many people maybe get caught up a little bit. I'm gonna tell you one of the mistakes that I'd made early on because us being a medical manufacturer, I kept actually going down that we actually make medical grade walk-in tubs as well. The quality and all those things that come from the institutional side are actually available to you. You gotta remember, Many of these people in that age demographic may not define themselves as in medical need. And if all of a sudden I'm explaining the medical need, they say, wait a minute, this isn't the tub for me. I can't tell you how many tub sales I had probably lost because I want, went down that bandwagon. So be aware of what your customers coming into. And I think the most important thing is keep in mind the whole point to a walk-in tub, the purpose is to eliminate slips, trips, and falls. That's it. The majority of the accidents that happen in home usually are in the bathtub or in the bathroom area. And frankly, most cases, over 80% of it, it's usually a uh, trip to the, the hospital, to the emergency ER. So um, make sure you understand your customer's objective. If they only want the swing in tub door, don't try to outsell them onto a swing out door even though you and I know that they're never going to get any better when we talk ambulating at this point. And as we grow older, usually ambulation declines. The swing outdoor is the perfect fit for anybody who wants to stay in their home. Does that help? 
Yeah, I think it's great. I think it touches on it and I think it will always be a fun conversation. So, and I think with that, we'll just, I'm going to screen share real quick and um, just share our first example of the, one of the tubs we're releasing here. So I'm going to go here, we'll make sure you can see that one's, we'll start with the uh, RC2 first. Um, so I've got the RC2 pulled up. Can you see mine, Jim? I want to make sure it's working for everybody. I can, and it looks Great. good. Great. Ladies and gentlemen, look at that stylish tub. It <laughs> actually improves anybody's uh, aesthetics approach in the bathroom. I just want to make sure everybody's aware of that. RC2 is the most popular tub. Again, the size wise, 29 inches by 50 inches, and it's about 40 inches high. We've got legs on there that you can adjust accordingly. Uh, but the big thing that we actually do that's different, if you look at anybody else's walk-in tubs out there, RC2, notice where the valves are located. They're not in the front of the tub where a bather has to stand up literally to reach to grab the controls. They're on the side of the tub. So what we're introducing to the best bath dealers is we've actually got what I call the good, the better, and the best approach. We're going to start out offering the RC2 Pacific in what we'll call a soaker version. Uh, the second, the better, would be actually in a combo. And a combo is where we have air spa and we have the whirlpool feature. And then when we talk about bus, that'll be provided to you in the Supreme package. On the Supreme package, it includes aromatherapy, chromatherapy, air spa, whirlpool, and the heated back end seat. So uh, kind of the complete best of all things in the world of walk-in tubs. So with the aromatherapy, correct me if I'm wrong, that's some oils that produce some, some smell while you're, while you're bathing, correct? Exactly. In fact, it's a heated canister that's actually set or positioned up by the head so that then when you're actually wanting to have the incense uh, close, you're going to smell that and enjoy that for a true spa experience. And then the chromotherapy, those are, those are lights, different colors of lights. And, and today, you know, they're LED lights, so you can actually have it where it's mood altering. You can change the colors. Today, if you look at where people are going in therapy, um, massage therapy, any of that, your circadian rhythm is something that's talked about. And so you can actually bring your lights if you're actually bathing first thing in the morning into red to help intensify and get you energized. Or if you're actually going right before you go to bed, you can bring it down to a yellow to help actually get you to the mode of sleep. Here's the, here's a real question. Can we sync those lights to music? You know, we don't today, but I wouldn't say that it's not far from the future for sure. And uh, that's an engineering project uh, we can, we can actually could, come up with. I could see my grandma would have enjoyed that. <laughs> uh, so while we've got this open, just on the, the first inward swinging tub that we're introducing, can this be you? I know these are questions that are going to come up. Can we use this as a shower as well? You know, ours isn't necessarily designed to be used as a shower. And, and part of that's where we're trying to actually help be eco-friendly. We want to use the spaces appropriately so we have a quicker fill time, which frankly then gives you a quicker drain time too. So when you hear people talking about the tubs in just general, you know, many of our regular traditional tubs are taking 110 gallons plus of water. We actually designed these tubs to be a little shallower, or I shouldn't say shallower, but uh, closer in proximity around the feet. And so, you know, it's, it's about taking in where you can actually bathe in approximately 40 gallons of water. That's what I was looking for here on our spec sheet, what the uh, gallon capacity was on this. It says 76 gallons. And I will give you just a rule of thumb. So everybody out there in, uh, you know, we'll say an engineering world, anticipate that volume. If we think about volume, every 100 pounds, you reduce the water volume by about 10 gallons. So when you think about somebody, and for simple math, we'll say 200 pounds, the water capacity in reality would be about 40 gallons of water that they would be bathing in. Uh, because we displace about 20 gallons. Just to point out that 76 gallons is measured when there's nobody into it and it's actually above the overflow line. So uh, more than actually what most people are going to be bathing in. And with this 29 inch width, 
I can assume most of the time this will fit through most doorways, especially <clears throat> if all you have to do is remove the door jam. I know sometimes in these smaller bathrooms, um, you may actually have to re remove the jam, but I'm guessing this will fit through most doorways fairly easily without a lot of demo. It does. In fact, uh, one of the things that we've done, we actually manufacture an aluminum frame. And just so everybody understands that, we really got that from the healthcare side, because if there's ever rust at a healthcare facility, that sends up red flags. And so we found out that aluminum doesn't rust, of course, and we use that same exact technology into our walk-in tubs as well. But we actually have handles on the inside so the 29 inches isn't then with hands on the outside of the tub trying to move it in and, and you're getting yourselves hurt. Uh, we actually have handles held inside of the tub so you can actually go through that. And you're right, Jason, in most cases, today's doors into the bathroom are about 30 inches. So you can actually get through that. But when we start talking about those we'll say homes of yesteryear, you know, some of those go down to 24 inches. Yeah. And so if you can remove that jam, it may be enough. Um, but, uh, you know, we've got another optional tub that we'll introduce probably in 2023 that actually allows for some of the fitting. Uh, and then if you're filling a 60 inch pocket, since I see this is only 50 inches, we're also offering the deck extension as well to fill that 10 inches then to make it a nice clean look, correct? That is correct, you know, so it makes a nice, clean, finished uh, 60 inch alcove. We've got a filler panel. It comes to you in 12 inch width, but it'll actually go across the back and down the front just to finish that off as a nice shelf. And while we've got the RC2 up, I'm just going to show just as another uh, example here. We've now have these loaded and most of our dealers are familiar with Best Fast Shop. These are now loaded into our shop. Um, just like all of our other products under walk-in tubs, you can see it's got its own landing page. Here's the RC2 that we're speaking on currently. And basically everything that we've outlined, you can come in here and select, you know, if it's a left-hand drain, you want it in white. And these do come in white or bone, correct, Jim? That is correct. And then, you know, we tried to keep it as simple as possible. Standard, which is the soaker. Combo Air, which is the uh, Air and Spa, or Air Spa with World, Whirlpool. And then you've got the Supreme, which comes with the Air, Whirlpool, Whirlpool Aromatherapy, Chromatherapy, and Heated Seat. So good, you can better, and better, best. Good, better, best. I love that. Keep it simple. But then you've got some additional features you can add as needed. What is the lap shoulder belt? It's, people are going to ask. It's on here. We might as yeah. well talk about it since it's right there. So, so ladies and gentlemen, we talk about, you know, if actually you're helping to assist, and we would see this mostly in the outswing door where maybe we're assisting a loved one to keep them in the, uh, the tub. And I always love asking about, well, what do you think that would be for? Many times we'll have an answer. It's about trunk control. Well, folks, we actually, again, cut our teeth on the healthcare. And, you know, our, our uh, wounded warriors, our vets, if you will, uh, obviously near and dear to our heart. One of the things that we would do when we'd go into a vet's home is that if you had an amputee or a double amputee, what do you think the body does? Yeah, it, it, it can't hold itself up. It, it floats. The yeah. body floats. So that lap and shoulder harness was actually designed to keep those wounded warriors from being or keeping them submerged into the tub that their body wasn't floating. Wow. Um, that and that was the real purpose. It does also help, like I said, with trunk control, but uh, it's an important little feature that a lot of folks don't don't understand and know. Well, and again, since it's not been something we've ever offered before and having it on our site, people are going to say, what is that? What do you do? <laughs> well, I hope no. that's everybody out there in uh, right? you know um, webinar land. Uh, I hope we gave you a little tidbit of info and now you too are a walk-in tub guru. That's right. And you can see here, we've got our... We've, We've been able to just keep this a flat 550 freight charge coming from Tennessee. So no matter where you ship to in the US, we're keeping it that flat shipping rate. So then let's jump over into the RM3. Sure. Out, the outward swinging door, transfer tub. This is the uh, tub number two we're launching with this rollout to all of our best bath dealers. Yeah, and in reality, if, if I actually would use a comparison, this is the Cadillac uh, when we talk walk-in tubs and the advantages for somebody who's wanting to 
age in place. Everybody understands what that term is today, or you could say barrier-free living or, or however, but um, this is the actual tub that most people, and when I say this, as our competitors started to knock off and yet really didn't have the answer because they didn't understand exactly why they were wanting to manufacture this tub. They were basically copying us and not really understanding that. But, uh, you know, if you're not familiar with the RM3 out there in webinar land, um, the door uh, is, uh, is unique and it actually pops up. Uh, there's, there's a trademark uh, design now that we have called key lock design. And that's actually how the handle and the door fit together. And it's, it's actually based on age old architecture, which we can get into that at another time. But that door will pop up and what it does is especially if you have a small area bathroom that door will actually clear your commode so it really becomes an advantage so that somebody who is declining in ambulation maybe on a walker maybe even in a wheelchair can easily transfer or transition into the tub and not having to be concerned about you know if it can clear that toilet or being in a small space and with the, with some of the new toilets out there now that are a little bit higher, that still will clear with no issue. You actually have about a two inch um, space Great. on jump. So it can, but it would be one of those things where we'd have to actually confirm for sure. And with this one, is this also available in the Soaker Combo Supreme? Absolutely. Yep, let's keep to that same simple approach. You know, good, better, best, Soaker. And again, everybody just realize you want a soaker. There's no GFI uh, electricity circuit needed around that tub. It's just like your traditional tub. Your uh, better approach would be the combo, which is going to have both uh, the air spa and the whirlpool. And then obviously the supreme package, which is the best, having uh, aromatherapy, chromatherapy, heated back and seat, and uh, both air spa and whirlpool as well. And this one does look, it is one inch wider. So it's still within that 50, 30 pocket. Um, you want to make sure you can get that through your door when you, you know, when you do sell these, I think that's important to really plan ahead and make sure you know how you're getting it into the home, measure your doorways. Those are always just tricks we like to talk about to make sure you don't find yourself in a jam with a tub that you have to cut a hole in the wall. Yeah, actually, uniquely, too, it's not always just getting into the door. Uh, a lot of people don't think about that height of that tub, and it's positioning it into place, uh, you know, where that maybe old tub was, that, you know, you actually try to keep in some pretty tight dimensions to help in actually position it into the bathroom. So, you know, valid point. And then back to our Best Bath shop, you can see we've also got the RM3 ready, loaded to go. Uh, a lot of the same information that's on that spec sheet, as well as the, the spec sheet sales sheet, as we would call this, just because it's a little bit different than a, just a traditional spec sheet. But all the information that we showed here is also available for you on the website, as well as the sales sheet. But same thing, you can select your door handing, your drain handing, your color, and whether you're going to do the standard combo or supreme. Um, and again, just trying to keep it as simplified for everybody out there. Now, Jim, let's say these guys, they're ready to buy. They all have their pricing. It's our pricing's loaded in here on Best Bath Shop now. Um, they can go and order as, as we're speaking and they have their pricing now. If they ordered right this second, when is this going to be available for? Them? How long is it going to take? So we're actually talking 10 days from order to ship, then anticipate you know, we'll say three to five days there for actual shipping. So we can easily say within 15 days, you should have it, uh, you know, at the residence. That's great. Yeah. And in fact, we're looking to improve that again. Um, I'm not going to go down that road yet. <laughs> you want to make a commitment with everybody on the call? You don't want to? Not, not yet. Let's let's just make sure that, uh, again, everybody knows that uh, go ahead and, and sell them. We'll build more. <laughs> I'm pretty sure Tammy and Tammy, our president, and Dave, our vice president, are on. Let's just, you can throw out these sorts of commitments. They'll hear it. It's fine. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, we want to make sure that the team that who's manufacturing these things, uh, you know, we're not actually giving them some heartburn. That's the important part right now. 
Well, I think we've done a good job of rolling out the tubs, uh, talking about just some very kind of basic intro into everything that we're doing. I know we're going to get probably some good questions um, that I want to make sure we leave time for. Um, I just know, again, this is something Jim and I have talked about for a while, um, seeing a, a marriage between Best Bath and Rain. And I know we're excited to have it finally happen and have Rain be a part of Best Bath and, you know, be able to share some of our um, experiences in manufacturing. But, you know, you've already been able to share some of your guys' experiences in manufacturing. You know, just one thing we learned right off the get-go is you guys do a four-day work week. And, you know, being able to offer that to your employees has been, you know, pretty beneficial to your team. And it's something that we decided to adopt over at Best Bath with our, with our manufacturing as well. So it's been very mutual as far as being able to get some best practices. So it's been fun to be able to do that so far. Yeah. And, you know, I think it's uh, to your point, share and share alike. Um, we get to learn from each other and frankly, it makes us a better manufacturer. So for you, our dealers, uh, you can rely and know uh, the quality and the product that uh, we're, we're having to offer. Hey, I thought I'd go through a couple of the actual, uh, if we said swing in door advantages and then the swing out door advantages, then I'll say something about the benefits. If, if that'd be okay, Jason, you game on that? Yeah, we got two minutes. So. so so, guys, just so everybody knows, the swing in door advantages, there's basically, you know, five things. I always like to say, have your clip loaded with at least five things. But cost is number one. The, the swing in door is going to be less expensive. It has a low threshold, which, first of all, everybody needs to know, it eliminates slips, trips, and falls. That's the number one concern, safety. It's a positive door seal because actually as the water fills, that water is compressing. So we call that compressing the door, generating no leaks. We actually use three quarter inch valves and an oversized drain. So it can be less time filling and then most importantly, less time draining. Valves are located on the side and they're easy to reach in our RC2. It's capable of being reverse plumbed. There's a reclined seat, this reclined contoured seat with a pericare depression provides comfort with the yeah, comfort with a purpose. And then it's echo friendly by using an in integrated design requiring less total water. Some of the benefits on the swing out door. So geriatric individuals will benefit. Couples who have different ambulating levels will definitely benefit. Bariatric individuals will benefit. Amputees easy to get in and out of will benefit. Any of those who may be paraplegics, tetras, quads, um, anybody in a wheelchair, uh, much easier to get in and out of. And um, anyone and everyone who would enjoy a bath and spa experience. Overall, some of the swing out door advantages, a wide door, it accommodates people of all sizes. It can be used if ambulating or not, easily transfer from a wheelchair or from a walker. Key lock, trademark, door design and that has a lifetime warranty on the seal these are all again swing out door advantages three quarter inch valves overside drains valves located on the side on the rm3 it also allows for reverse plumbing contoured seat i call it comfort with purpose and then can accommodate mobile uh full body lift not on the rm3 but on a couple of versions we'll have in 2023 and then it also can accommodate a caregiver if needed when helping with baths. So that's again, with everybody at the aging in place, I'll leave it there. What is the warranty? You mentioned the lifetime warranty on the seal. What's the warranty on the tubs? Five years on the shell, right. three years on all components. I will make mention oh. to just uh, so everyone knows, we actually have a picture here of a five system valve. Uh, again, I'm talking about the faucets. We've meet recently, and again, this is back on the COVID and supply chain, we've made a change to a TMV valve that, uh, that stands for thermal mixing valve. And you'll find that in some metropolitan areas, they require a TMV valve. So we've made that switch. You'll see that on all tubs that are manufactured now. Uh, and again, that uh, we actually preset the temperature at 104 degrees max. That way we prevent uh, any potential scalding. So FYI on that. Great. With that, I'm going to stop screen sharing and have Chanel jump back in and let us know if we have any questions. Awesome. We have a lot of good questions. Um, so Jim, you just mentioned the lifetime warranty on the seal. Um, specifically, does that apply to the RC2 as well? 
Uh, it does, yes, all door seals. And actually it's just so that everybody has the comfort knowing that normally it's not a door seal that's the issue. And, um, you know, frankly, so we're willing to put a lifetime warranty on it. Awesome. And then uh, when you guys were reviewing the RC2, you mentioned uh, an amount of gallons that were saved for every 100 pounds. What was that again? So it's actually for every, and this is just, we'll call it a rule of thumb, but for every 100 pounds, it will displace 10 gallons of water. So if it's a 60 gallon tub and I'm 200 pounds, I'm probably only gonna use, and I'm not 200 pounds, but yeah. like if you water. were, if I were, that's my, that's my goal weight. I will be, <laughs> um, but if I were 200, it, I'd use about 40 gallons of water. Ish. maximum realizing yeah. that's max you know i mean in most cases people would actually bathe in less than that but yeah absolutely okay and then also during the rc2 review um someone asked why not use a two inch drain actually we have a two inch drain um even though in our dimensions there it shows an inch and a half it actually then has an adapter that can be reduced down to an inch and a half based on most of the the residential homes so there's an adapter that can make it two inch or an adapter. It's that actually included. Down. It is included with the tub. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Uh, what size water heater is recommended? So in most cases, everybody has about a 50 gallon water heater. And mo in most cases, I had mentioned based, based on what you're uh, bathing in, you actually don't need to alter that. Um, I think that's one of the big concerns in most remodels. However, what I don't know is how much sediment may be in that hot water heater. So if they truly aren't getting 50 gallons, you know, maybe it's gonna need a new water heater, but uh, yeah, in most cases, we actually uh, accommodate almost any bath situation with, uh, you know, 50 gallon water heater. Awesome. And um, in regards to the deck extension, or I believe you guys call it a fill panel? We call it a filler panel. Again, filler. reference basically uh, within our part number. Um, but yeah, that's basically an added shelf. Okay, and that's just terminology. All of us best bathers are going to have to change over. <laughs> um, is that, can you trim that? It can be trimmed. Actually, it has to be trimmed based on, you know, if you've got 60 inches, uh, the RM3 is an example is 50 inches you only had a 10 inch space there needed. So you'll have to trim off two inches. Awesome. That's great. Uh, is there a tiling flange around the tub? There is not, but if it's required, we can actually build it as we build the tub. So it can okay. be included if needed. Um, and then there was a question about the difference in threshold height between the two tubs. Yeah, actually, that's a great question. Uh, I'd like to point out that threshold height on the RC2, and again, depending upon the legs, you know, as I'm, I'm doing all my hand gestures here, but depending on how you actually have the legs uh, adjusted, and, uh, you know, we got a maximum where that could be potentially up to four inches, but that threshold height would probably be between three and a half uh, to five inches in RC2. On the RM3, we're going to be, you know, over five to seven inches. But I like to point out on the RM3, actually the threshold height, we remove it from the actual table because what we do when we open that door, we actually, it's just like getting in a car, but many times you sit down in the seat first and then you pivot your legs into the tub. Hence, there's really no concern of the threshold height and it actually eliminates even that much more potential of any slips, trips, and or falls. Okay, awesome. I figured I'd share again since you were talking about it so we can look I at it. I appreciate that. That's good. <laughs> uh, you're good at this, Jason. <laughs> and then I think this is something the three of us talked about yesterday, so it might be good to cover. Um, can you, Jim, go over kind of the hinge and drain side options as far as opposite sides or same side? Yeah, um, so we at RAIN always define a left door or a right door from basically a resident sitting in the tub and then knowing that the drain is going to be at your feet. 
But Jason brought up a great point. If we're on the outside of the tub and we actually look at the door and the hinges are on the left, in most cases, that's where the drain is going to be. It maintains and it holds true to form. So hinges on the left, we know the drain is going to be on the left. That's a left-hand door. Again, hinges on the right. We know the drain is going to be on the right. That's a right-hand door. Our advantage that you don't see with any other tubs is that we can actually reverse plumb. Now that's based on the installer saying, hey, the door swing benefits being a left hinge door, but the drain is over on the toilet side and it's on the right side. All that plumber has to do or that installer just run that drain right to where it actually is uh, underneath the tub and, and you're good to go. And that's a perfect segue to the next question. Someone asked if the reverse plumbing can be under the tub. And not under Absolutely. the floor. Okay. Yeah, Great. it's actually underneath the tub. So that's the whole point of the space that we have left underneath there. So it can easily be reverse plumb without destruction of maybe a concrete floor or anything to that effect. Awesome. And then Jim, can you just confirm on those um, specification sheets if there's information regarding um, door clearance? Uh, door clearance, I may be, what are we actually talking about for? The door swing clearance, what I imagine oh, outward. Right, it's right here. Yeah. Should be what I saw. It. I may have it on something oh, else here. I'm looking right now. Oh, down oh, you what? That's only going to be on the RM3. Obviously, the door swing on the um, RC2, it's all inside. But let me see here if we've got it on the RM3. And I may not have that in front of me. OK, I'll just we'll we'll hang on to that question. And if we can't find the answer, we'll get it to you guys. Um, next question, are, are the air jets heated? Air jets are friction heated. So what that really references is where it does, the air goes through, you know, you're using ambient air. It goes through a friction heater. It's actually meant just so that it keeps the warm, uh, the water at its maintained temperature. It's not going to heat up the water, but it maintains it. Perfect. Um, and then this last question, are these tubs CSA approved for Canada? They are. Awesome. And then there's a couple other questions regarding access to additional rain items, um, promotional materials, and even commercial tubs. So Jason, I don't know if maybe you want to touch on what that's going to look like. And, and I imagine we'll have some webinars down the road with additional options. Yeah, I would just say that we have, um, you know, worked really hard to get these up and released to our dealer team, I'm really focused on the two residential tubs to be released to this dealer group first. We do have two commercial tubs that are, I think, on the verge of being released um, here shortly. And with each release, you know, we're working on updating all the marketing materials. You know, we haven't quite, we've got some sales literature on the Best Bass shop, um, that sales sheet that you saw available, but we'll continue to update that, bring out new pieces as they're made available. We didn't want to have that hold off um, releasing these. So we wanted to just get these on the site and available to order as quick as we could, but we'll continue to um, bring out new pieces. And, and again, we're kind of in a staged release of where we're going to try to release new tub, you know, a couple new tubs every month or so. And so I know the next two are going to be the commercial ones and we'll be doing something similar along what we've done with this um, for that commercial release. Awesome. Uh, a couple more questions came in. <laughs> uh, do you guys want to touch on the uh, tub surrounds available? Yeah, Jim, go ahead. I know you guys do have a surround, a wall surround, and, and luckily you manufacture it with wood backing and everything. So we're excited. Yeah, actually, yeah, um, actually uh, just so everybody's uh, benefit, uh, we sent that out to engineering at uh, Caldwell, so it's at Best Bath as we speak. But the the tub surround is a a two by six subway tile. Uh, again, just meant to be around the top uh, of the uh, walk in tubs. Uh, the trim kit that goes with that. The only reason it has to differentiate between the uh, RM three and the RC two is based on the tubs design. So uh, that's the only thing that's different from them. 
Um, you know, we actually have it. I'd, I'd like to say if there's interest, there's definitely a, a part number and it can be ordered. Um, but I think we still want to see if we can't fine tune some of that based with uh, best baths engineers uh, and their experience and, uh, you know, making sure we've got uh, all the I's dotted and the T's crossed for sure. Awesome. Um, let's see. I don't know if you can answer this, Jim, but uh, do you have an idea of how long the water maintains the heat with those jets? Yeah, and to our advantage, you know, fiberglass is a pretty good, um, I'll say insulator. Um, you know, we back it with uh, many different products that helps keep that heat in place. In most cases, I'll say a 20 minute uh, time span. Uh, I've heard some people actually sit in their baths uh, for an hour. And it's not to say that they don't heat the water up, you know, with uh, letting a little out and a little bit more in. Uh, the other way that we see them do that is we actually include a shower wand with, with each and every tub. And so they may actually uh, use the shower wand and then just spray themselves over to if they've let some of the water drain out too. So several different ways to actually maintain where you can enjoy your spa experience if, uh, if that's the, the, the intent to the question. Awesome. And then the last question I had was a rebranding question. And so someone asked if the tubs will be rebranded as best bathtubs. We've actually redesigned the logo for rain. So it's, it's a rain by best bath. And so I imagine we are working towards updating those um, logo stickers on the tubs, right, Jim? Yeah, I think that's something in process is uh, obviously everyone realizes throughout the COVID, many times you ended up buying more uh, inventory of items than you wish you would have, especially with the acquisition coming into place. But uh, there will be a change uh, that's going to be just a running change as we move out of the old. And then, like Chanel said, she actually had a big part in the design, which I think it looks great for everybody's benefit. Uh, maintain the rain brand name wise, but uh, now it's a best bath brand. So we're excited about that partnership. All right. Well, we appreciate your time, guys, and your expertise. And if you guys have any other questions, feel free to continue to add them in the chat. I'll leave this up for a little while. Uh, you can email us at marketing at bestbath.com. We will send out an, an email with the video recording and then any other resources that might have been requested during the chat. And other than that, thanks again. Yeah, thanks, Jim, for hopping on and doing this with me. And I'm, again, so excited and I love that we're ending right on time at 1045 or 1245. Well, and Jason, you know, we had made mention years ago that this was truly a match made in heaven. So it's exciting to be part of the best bath team. And Chanel, can't do it without you. Appreciate you your <laughs> emphasis here and helping us through some of those technical difficulties. But uh, thank you very much, everyone. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Bye. Thanks, Bye -bye. everybody.